Hi, I'm going to be um, explaining how to use Kirchhoff's um, circuit rules to solve circuits with multiple batteries. So these are common problems that you find in introductory physics books. Okay, so um, we're going to choose a pretty simple one to just so you get the idea without having real complex numbers. Um, so we have two batteries, a 10 volt and a 2 volt. They're actually, this battery is trying to push the current this way. If we go with the, for, the conventional flow of current, this battery is trying to push um, the current that way. This battery is trying to push the current that way. You can almost think of this as a flange out, which is like a bugle that's pushing like a sound outward. Can you imagine that flanging out? And so it's trying to push the current this way if you go with conventional current. Okay, and then we got 3 ohms, 2 ohms, and 4 ohms. And um, maybe the problem wants you to find the current in all the branches. The current in this branch, the current in this branch, and the current in that branch. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to use Kirchhoff's loop rule and junction rules to get this. So um, let's us, we're going to, we have to um, guess which way the current is flowing. And so because this is um, a 10 volt battery, much more than the 2 volt battery, I'm going to guess that the current here is flowing this way. So I'm going to call that I1. Uh, this is I1 too, by the way. This whole thing, this whole branch is I1. Okay. Um, let's call uh, the current in here. It could be going up, but I'm just going to guess that it's going down. If I'm wrong, it's not a big deal. My, I'll just get a negative number in the end. Okay? I don't have to redo the problem or anything. Okay, so so um, this is I2, and then this would be I3. This is I3. This whole thing is I3. So the current's coming along. It splits and goes both ways, and then it recombines to I1. Okay? Now, we have three unknowns. We don't know what I1 is, I2. 2 and I3 is. You know how normally um, in an introductory circuit problem you would break this into one battery with one resistor? You can't do that here. It's, it's uh, the only way you can do this is with Kirchhoff's loop rule and junction rule. Okay, so um, let's see how this works. So I'm going to use the junction rule to get one of my equations. So this is going to, let's see, if I'm going to say that the currents in have to equal the currents out. So the currents out are um, I2 plus I3. So that's an equation. So I have one equation, but I have three unknowns. And here's, this is how it, this works. If you have three unknowns, you need three separate equations. If you have 50 unknowns, you need 50 separate independent equations to be able to solve for them. That's just how it works. And so I'm going to need three equations. So this is one of them. Um, you might think I could get another equation from this junction, but if I did that, I'm not going to take the time to do it, but if I did it, it would be the exact same equation. So it might look a little different, but it, if we could rearrange it back to this exact thing. So that's not any new information. So... Um, what I'm going to need to do is I need to um, use a loop rule. And so um, I could use this loop rule, or this loop rule, or this loop rule. I'm, I'm going to just go with this one for right now. I'm going to use this loop rule. Now, um, I could um, add up all the voltages. The loop rule says when you add up all the voltages around any loop, they got to add up to zero. But I could go this way, or I could go this way. It doesn't matter which way I go. It's going to work regardless. But um, I'm going to go this way. And um, here's the trickiest part of this. When we do find voltage gains and drops, um, if I go with the battery, that's going to be a gain. So if I go this way, I'm going to gain 10 volts. But if I'm going this way, if I move this way around the loop, then that's going to be a drop of 10 volts. So I gain 10 volts, or I can drop 10 volts going this way. So that's batteries. Batteries, you just look and see which way it's pointing. This one's pointing that way, so if I go that way, I'm going to gain. This, the resistors are a little are a little different, and so resistors, you got to look at the current. So since the current's flowing up, if I go with the current, if I go with the current, then I drop voltage because I'm going downhill. Anytime you're walking 
on a river and the, and you're walking with the current you're, you're on your way downhill so um so let's start here let's say and i'm just going to add up all the voltages around the loop so let's say i'm going to go and gain 10 volts um so then the next place i'm going to now am i going to gain or am i going to drop when i'm going with the current so when I go with the current, I'm going to drop 10 volts. I'm going to drop some volts. So the voltage I'm going to drop is going to be minus, because it's a drop, and it's going to be um, I times R, I times R, Ohm's law. Assuming this is an ohmic resistor, um, which they, they almost always are for an introductory physics course. So let's see. Um, it's going to be I, I3, times R, 4 ohms. Okay, then I'll continue around. Okay, I'm going with the current again here. And so because I'm going with the current, that's a drop in voltage. So it's going to be I1 times um, 3 ohms. And that all has to add up to zero. That's the loop rule. So when you go, in other words, the voltage at A with respect to A, if this is point A, the voltage at A with respect to A has to be zero. Okay. Now, I could have um, done this loop. I'm not going to use this loop, but I'm going to quickly show you what that loop rule would look like if I did that one. I'm going to show it here, but I'm never going to use it again. So it's going to be, if I start here, uh, let me go, yeah, I'll just start here and go around. So let's see, it would be 10 volts. And then um, now I'm going against the battery, so it would be minus 2 volts. And now I'm going downhill. So since I'm going downhill, it's going to be minus... Um, 2 ohms times I2 I times R for that voltage and then um, I'm going um, with the with the current again so that's going to be minus um, I1 times 3 ohms that all has to add up to 0 because of the loop rule okay so I, I just wanted to show you that um, to get another one Actually, I could just go with those. I could use this one too, though. Let me just use this one. I'm going to use this loop rule. So here goes. It's going to be a gain 2 volts. And then um, I'm going with the current, so it would be minus I3 times 4 ohms. And then um, now I'm going up. So if I go up, I'm going up um, the upstream so I'm going uphill so that's going to be a gain of um, I2 times 2 ohms okay that has to equal zero okay so I have my three equations and my three unknowns what my look I only the only things I don't know are I1 I2 and I3 and I have three equations so I should be able to solve this um, if I were truly going to solve this, I would go to a, T, a TI graphing calculator, and I think they have pretty easy ways to solve equations like this. Um, and, and I know they have pretty easy ways to solve these things using matrices, or some, some calculators can just do it with their solver function or whatever. Okay, well, I'm going to do this by hand. Okay, so I'm going to um, do it just by using substitution. I know there are other ways to solve this, but I'm just going to use substitution. Okay, so um, what I'll do is I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to sub it into there. So for where you see I1, I'm going to put in I2 plus I3. Okay, I'm also going to lose the, the um, units, so I'm going to get rid of ohms and volts um, just because it's already going to be messy. So um, here goes. So I'm going to say 10. I'm going to take this equation. I'm going to put in this. So it's going to be 10 minus uh, 4i3. I dropped the ohms, in other words. Minus, and for i1, I'm going to put in um, i2 plus i3. So i2 plus i3 times 3. That equals um, 0. Okay, so here are my two equations, and I only have two unknowns. I just don't know I2 and I3 now. Okay, so maybe what I'll do here is um, I'll solve this for I2. 
and I'm going to substitute I2 in for that. Okay, so I'm going to bring this equation down here, this equation right here, and I'm going to solve it for I2. So let's see, that's going to be, um, if I do that, I'm going to get 2, drop in the voltage again, minus 4 I3. I'll bring this to the other side. So it's going to be equals a negative 2 I2. So that means that I2, solving for I2, maybe bring divide both negative 2 by both sides is going to be um, a negative 1 plus 2 I3. Can you check that for me? So if I bring the, yeah, it's going to be a uh, positive 2 times I, I3. Okay, so here's um, my one equation, and now I'm going to sub it into this equation. So I'll have only one unknown then. So here goes. I'm going to take this equation right here. And for I2, I'm going to sub in to there. Then I'll have only one unknown. So I'm going to do that up here. Okay, so here goes. Uh, what did I just say I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to take 10 minus 4 I3 minus, let me distribute the 3 in right away, 3 I2 plus 3 I3. Oh, wait, there's a minus there. Yeah, there's the negative sign goes in there, so this is a minus 2. Sorry about that. Equals zero. See, I have my problems with math too. All right, so um, so let me um, make this a little bit more simple, and then I'll, I'm gonna plug in for I two then. Okay, so I have um, I three. So I got seven. I got negative seven I three in there. So ten minus seven I three. minus 3i2 equals 0. All right, so now I'm going to plug in this, this i2. I'm going to plug in this i2 down here into here. Okay, so I got 10 minus 7i3 minus, okay, so 3. And for i2, I'm going to put in negative 1 plus 2i3. That equals zero. Okay, let me distribute that in. So we got 10 minus 7i3, and that's going to be plus 3 um, minus 6i3 equals zero. All right, let me combine these. So 13 minus 13i3 equals zero. So I3 has to equal one. Okay. So that's one amp. So that's one of my knowns. This is one amp right here. Okay. So um, let's do the next one. So I2 then, just putting it into this equation, I2 using this equation is equal to negative one plus two times one amp. So that's going to be 1 amp, too. So I2 is 1 amp. It's positive 1 amp, so I got the direction right. If it were negative, I would just know that it was going the other way. So that's that's the second one. Okay, the third one, then, I know that I2 plus I3 is um, I1. So I1, using this top equation, has got to be 2 amps. Yeah, I know, it's kind of a long process. But if you have a calculator, it's pretty. It's a lot easier. Okay, now that you've gotten through that, one other quick thing. Sometimes um, a problem will ask you, like, what's the voltage at A with respect to B? Okay, so if they want to know what the voltage is at A with respect to B, in other words, this, what's the voltage at A with respect to B? 
um, you can start at B and get work your way to A and just count voltages. So you could go this way, or this way, or this way. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer. You see the easiest way? I think it's going this way. Starting at B, the voltage at A with respect to B, just start here. I'm going uphill, so it's going to be, I'm going to gain, and it's going to be um, 1 amp times 4, so it's going to be 4 volts. A is 4 volts higher than B. Of course, I could have gone this way. I gain two. I gain four four volts and another. Uh, wait, I gain uh, two volts and then another two volts. That'd so be four volts. Yeah. Okay. I have one more thing. You know, I've already gone pretty far. This is like 15 minutes or 16 minutes, but I want to make one point about this because um, a lot of times what they'll do on physics tests. To make because this is a lot to do on a physics test so a lot of times what they'll do is they'll give you something like this they'll give you um, a question where they actually give you the currents and um, they want to know say what this battery is okay but they don't give you this battery so um, this is a lot easier like you're gonna like the solution to this because I'm gonna go with that if this is 3 amps and that's 1 amp this has to be 2 amps so the question is what is what is the EMF that's a symbol for EMF what's the voltage of that battery okay so it's gonna get a little loud in here in a moment because my furnace is going on alright so um, here goes so I'm going to just, I've, I've said that that's 2 amps. I had to figure that out. And now I just can go like around this whole thing. And you see how I'll have only one unknown. So I could start here and I could say E1. I'm going to gain E1 of voltage. Minus, so this would be minus 40, 2 amps times 20 ohms is 40 volts. And then um, this if this is 2 amps and 1 amp, this again has to be 3 amps and I'm going to be dropping another um, 6 amps or 6 volts rather, so 3 amps times 2 ohms is 6 volts that all has to equal 0 so now I know E1 is 46 volts that's so much nicer so like that, a multiple choice test, that would be a reasonable question. This one um, would be a little <laughs> rough on a multiple choice, uh, but this one is, is definitely something that they might ask on a multiple choice. All right, uh, sorry for the length of this video. I'll talk to you, bye.